was not a science. It was a madness. This girl was punching me and took my wallet out. And I was trying to call the cop on these thieves. And people surrounding me. We are the only ones can fight for human rights. Equity is evil ideology. This is a complete evil. And if you say that now you're a right wing, like a bigot, I'm a CIA agent. They tell me I am trained by CIA to tell this. I'm like, where is the CIA? Why are they not calling me, right? Like, and they say, oh, you are brainwashed by Fox News. I'm like, I came here in America to not knowing what Fox News is. <laughs> I did not know what conservative or, or like liberal was when I was escaping. I had no agenda. I had no idea what the world was. Just I come here, I recognize the patterns that I see now and pointing that out now that I'm, I'm the spy. You know, that's how they show you down and kill your character. It's very interesting how many different nationalities or different immigrants are coming here and they're starting to see the writing on the wall. You hear it from Venezuelans, mm -hmm. you hear it from Cubans, you hear it from Chinese. Iranians. You hear it yeah. from Iranians. Yeah. You hear it from North Koreans. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, it's, do you feel like you're making headway in your mission statement to by me, bringing yeah. this stuff to light? Do you think people are paying attention? To me, is when I do this work, um, I was really shocked during the pandemic. Um, I thought I brought my son. The best thing I have done too was giving him the American passport, giving him this free country. Unfortunately, pandemic just began as soon as he, became, he becomes a toddler learning how to walk. Pandemic sets in in Chicago. I cannot like afford, I have to t send him to daycare to work. At daycare, he was forced to wear a mask eight hours a day up here. And they let the street clubs open next door. Adults can get, go get drugs and high and do whatever thing they want in the street clubs. Toddler who just barely had to walk at two have to wear a mask up here eight hours a day. There's nothing I could do about that. And then, People saw me, some mothers in the play group, in his play group saw me that I was, I guess, classical liberal, told to their nanny that don't play with my son because of me. And to me, it's not about people are waking up or not. I have no option because this country is not that truly free anymore. During the pandemic, it was not a science. It was a madness. I was, uh, I was robbed on the street in Chicago in front of my son by black women. In the daylight, broad light, people, this girl was punching me and took my wallet out. And I was trying to call the cop on these thieves. And people surrounding me, looking at me, screaming at me. Why are you doing this? You're racist. Why are you doing this? Why are you, like, because I was trying to call the cops on these thieves that I'm the problem, because they can never be oppressed, right, because of their skin color. Mm -hmm. I don't deserve justice. I don't deserve compassion because of my skin color in America. I mean, this is another side of madness. This is another side of injustice. Because I'm not a black, I don't deserve to be protected by the public. I don't deserve to call the cops and get help from them. And I think this is a thing, like, people don't understand what the world would be like without America. When I was escaping from North Korea, even that darkness, I had a place to run to. I had hope I can escape to freedom. I mean, if America falls down, where do we escape? No place to go. We don't. This is the last hope for humanity. This is the last hope for me. And this is the only hope for my son. No matter people don't wake up, it doesn't matter, I have to fight. Because I know if we keep going this path of this equity bullshit, we are gonna end up like North Korea. And, and already, like, it was so shocking to me, Americans were asking me, are North Koreans are stupid or something? Why don't they just start revolution, right? And I'm like, so let me ask you, like, currently now in America, you stand up, it's costing your job, your livelihood. 
and your, your reputation. But in North Korea, it costs three generations of your children's, your family's life. Your and life, your kid's life, your parents' and your life. Kid's life. Yeah. And then in America, even the price is not that much. People are cowards. They go to corporation. They follow the diversity training. They follow all this nonsense. They don't even know what that means. They do as they're told. They do as they're they're following shit like it, all these people. If I was alive the time of the Holocaust, I would have saved Anna Frank. I would be the hero of saving all these people. I'm telling them, yeah, there are three hundred thousand of North Korean women are going through modern day Holocaust. What are you doing about it? Nothing. Watching their Netflix. So the hypocrisy of these people. And but you should, I mean, that's the thing. There's no alternative other than keep fighting to me. So I think that's what I'm trying to convey to American people. It's, it's not an option to fight or not. We have to do this. If we don't do this, if we don't protect our freedom, who's gonna do it for us? You know, I was always saying, it's important to fight for animals' rights. There are so many of my friends in New York City fight for climate change, fight for little ducks, you know, fight against Canada goose. <laughs> you know, fighting for dolphins. And to me, they always ask me, like, why are you fighting for human rights? And people ask, like, why do I have to care about human rights? We don't ever ask, why do you have to care about puppies, right? Somehow, when you fight for human rights, you always have to tell them why you fight for it. Because we are the only ones who can fight for human rights. Dogs will not fight for us. Machines will not fight for us. We are the one, only ones can fight for our rights as a human beings. Yeah. And somehow, that is not somehow automatically understandable thing to them. That is somehow it's a, a luxury that we should do. You know, we can only afford it when we can. I think what you're saying is a mass population of people who have had it very easy for a very long time. Yeah. They don't understand. They don't, it's like similar, but completely different. It's similar to the mindset in North Korea. They can't imagine yeah. what freedom is like. They have no, they have no idea mm -hmm. what they're missing out on, yeah. you know, in life. And then, you know, turn the tables and come to America and they, Americans, most of them cannot fathom what a life in North Korea would be like, or what a life in Venezuela or Cuba or Russia yeah. or Iran, yeah. you know, they cannot, it doesn't, it doesn't even compute, yeah. you know, because if it did, then we wouldn't be seeing the shit that we're seeing right now, you know? Yeah. And I don't know, the divide has become so strong that I don't know <laughs> I don't know how to, I don't know how to bring this stuff to light. You know, it's people like you, they have to bring it to light. And, and I think the hardest part of what you have to do is you have to bring the story to two different, to two different sides of this country. Yeah. You have to bring it to the right, to the conservative side. You have mm -hmm. to bring it to the liberal side and in hope to God yeah. that people are listening. Do you, do you feel like people are listening? I, it's interesting. When I was, with my first book, um, I had a media training by uh, the publisher and they gave me training uh, not to talk about anything. Like, you remember, I came to America first time and somebody asked me, like, what do you think about gun, owning a gun? I said, that is the most empowering thing I've ever heard. Imagine if North Korean people had the guns. They're not going to let them come execute your mom or your children. They're going to shoot them back. Even if, I mean, it doesn't matter. You're going to get killed anyway. If we had the guns, governments, what, are going to kill all of us? Then who are they going to rule over, right? It makes no sense for them to kill all of their people. So there's no country ever can do that to their citizens if the citizens have a right to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. It was about that. I was like, of course we should defend that right. It's, it's the most important right I can ever see as a free individual. Keep that liberty. And they were like, okay, what do you like to read? It's like, I like to read John Stewart, like Mears, like on liberty and Basti as the law. 
and they were like, "Okay, but just don't talk about that in public." <laughs> <laughs> Because before even you start your fight for Northern people, they're gonna brand you as a conservative right-wing uh, conspiracy theorist. Mm -hmm. So I had to avoid that for a long time. I did not talk about that. I only talked about it when the day when I was seeing the pandemic, how I was powerless raising my son in Chicago. There's nothing I do to make no sense this mask mandate on my kid. There's nothing I could do. You know, they were forcing him to do it. I and mean, what can I do? There's nothing I could do. Even though children are safe. And they would open the dog parks. And then my son, the children's playground is closed in the hot summer day in Chicago. Where the sun hits the playground, it sanitizes it all. And I was like, dogs have more rights than my child right now. Dogs can go dog parks and play and run around. My child, because he's a human child, he cannot go to playground and play together. And I would feel so powerless at the time. And I was like, I'm not going to repeat the history. I'm not going to be like my grandmother, going to be compli you know, complying, complying with this, this control. And when it comes to me, I did not know even that I was oppressed. And I'm going to fight everything I have. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.